Hello and good day, good evening, or wherever you are uh, stopping in. This is a talk by Kovaris. Uh, my name is uh, Uli Thoman, and I will tell you something about automated single vessel DNA sample standardization, fragmentation, and library prep, and all um, you know in about ten slides. So bear with me. So what do we uh, what do we think about uh, DNA sample standardization? In a single vessel, we thought about that because some of our, uh, you know, customers and collaborators were um, very often having problems with samples with DNA samples that had variable buffers in there. We recommend low TE for obvious reasons because that's the best shearing buffer. They had variable volumes, variable low, substandard concentration. So even if you added, you know, the the maximum amount. You would never be uh, within the uh, library prep um, requirements. And then, of course, you have uh, variable purity. I mean, when you look at these samples, sometimes we saw samples so that we get for, for us and, and they are uh, looking yellowish. They have like little chunks floating around. So what our idea was that, you know, we're going to address those challenges. And what we do is bind these DNAs to magnetic beads in a, a 96 well sample uh, plate, the AFA plate, as you will see soon, uh, you know, you bind it to the beads, you wash it, and then you elude, and you will say, okay, that's, I can do that as well. But yes, during elution, we can elude in a very low volume, and we can share at the same time on our AFA uh, 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 energetics uh, instrumentation. So basically, you would have a single tube workflow, no transfer of the losses. You have a lower volume, elution volume, so you can concentrate your sample as one uh, as, as much as you want. You have also faster shearing because lower volume means faster shearing times. And you would even, even seamlessly integrate that with library prep because now you have your uh, Ampure uh, beats in there and you just basically uh, can go through your library prep, your NGS library prep, and it will show you that as, as well. So uh, the consumables, the instrumentation and the technology is shown in this slide and very, very uh, schematic. Basically, the Technology is AFA energetics, and uh, most of you will know that, but just in short, it's basically a focused acoustics where we can focus energy, uh, sonic energy, into the sample. This one shows still a fiber in it in, in the generic vials that we also have, but in this plate, in the newer uh, plates and strip tubes uh, in the 96 well, uh, you know, like a, a PCR a plate, we don't need that. So this is this is fiber, so that is automatable. Uh, and this is basically a, a technology where we can shear DNA uh, isothermal uh, without heating the sample. We can shear it to precise uh, sizes, et cetera, et cetera. This is the plate, the AFA tube TPX plate, and this is the instrumentation. In this case, uh, we use this kind of instrumentation because these are our line transducer instrumentation, and they can shear the whole uh, row or column in a plate. If you had a 384 well plate, which we also have, uh, you can do two at a time. And you can also scan this because this will allow you to move the plate seamlessly through that, uh, you know, uh, line transducer, and you basically scan over it, and you can repeat these scans until you have your your sample shear to the to the to the right size. So this is what uh, what we need. And here is an example for TC, uh, TSO 500 uh, protocol uh, that a customer actually asked about. Said, okay, so they asked for 40 nanograms uh, per 12 mic. Uh, so that we can do the uh, the, the library prep, um, and that requires a sample DNA concentration of 3.3 nanograms per liter. What do I do if I if it's lower and I cannot do that? Well, then you will be able to uh, you know to 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 use our protocol, and also fragment to the uh, required 150 base pairs. Um, so what we do is basically simultaneous speed based purification, concentration, and fragmentation. And then we basically have it in 12 microliters or in 20 microliters if you do a, a you know a different library prep, um, uh, or even in five microliters. So it, it it really depends on your needs. And you can have a single vessel workflow all the way from uh, uh, you know from shearing, and you can tag it on into library prep. And you also have a flexible fragment size distribution. You can dial it as as much as you want. You can have 150 base pairs. You can have a 550 base pairs, and anything in between. It really depends on the time and the energy that you push it. So. Here is the uh, the shearing, so the binding, the wash, and the release uh, in 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 a low uh, um, uh, 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 twelve microliters low TE, so hundred microliters DNA samples per ninety six AFA tube TPX well, 
we add the ampere to the final limit of 0.8x. Um, that's our standard protocol. We mix it. You can actually also mix this with um, AFA. Uh, I just want to mention that. We don't show it here, but that's a possibility. You separate on the magnet, you wash twice with 150 microliters of ethanol, and then you elude in 12 microliters, you add 12 microliters of low TE, and you shear the DNA once it comes off the beads. And here you see how reproducible that is in the in the upper uh, graph in the reproducibility. So it's like three, three rows that we show. The target was 175 in this case, and the CVs are pretty below, way below 5%. The recovery is also in nearly 80% mark, which is very good when you shear down to this kind of sizes. And you also, in the lower one, in the flexibility, you see that depending on how long you shear, you know, how long you treat the sample, you can go from 175 all the way down to 150, near 150. So, and of course, uh, if you if you lower the, the, the time from 250 seconds to only 100 or 120, you are in the 350 range. So then we added it on and said, okay, now we have that. Why can't we add it on to the uh, AFA plate uh, TPX in the same plate, add, add that into a library prep, and we chose the Kappa Hyper Prep um, for this. We also wanted to have the Kappa Hyper Prep uh, volumes reduced in uh, 2.5 fold, because in this case, we eluded our shear DNA in 20 microliters of low TE. And we said, okay, usually it's 50 microliters. Uh, we have 20, so we just lower everything off the volumes and move through the library prep. And you can see instead of 50, you have 20 input. Then you have 24 instead of 60 for the entry pair. You have 47 instead of 110 for the adapter location and so on and so on. And at the end, you basically do a two-fold uh, a post-ligation cleanup. Uh, we did that 2x two, two uh, post-ligation cleanup. That basically is a transfer into a new plate because uh, at one time you take the supernatant off and then purify it again. So the last one you would add beads and binding buffer. In this case, we would not add any ampule beads with a binding buffer in the first uh, uh, workflows because the beads are in uh, already during the standardization because remember we add that in. So that's the only difference. You add only the binding buffer. And then you see here what it was. So we went into with uh, uh, three different um, uh, concentrations or three different amounts of DNA. In the second row up there, you see a total initial G uh, DNA sample that was a, a, a you know just a, a standard DNA from Promega, uh, 303 nanograms, uh, 128 nanograms, and 15 nanograms. We choose 15 nanograms because we said, okay, what we want, we really want to improve the low input. Uh, we we didn't expect much improvement of a you know over over a non-single vessel, but if you have enough DNA in there. So after the sample concentrations, uh, uh, when, when we alluded in the 20 microliters, we had 10 nanograms per microliter, uh, 5 nanograms and 0.5. So it's a, it's a substantial increase in the concentrations. We basically doubled or more than doubled the concentration in some of the cases. The yields were at 82% and 72% for the small ones. And then the yield after the post-ligation cleanup was actually you know well within the range. I will show that in the next slide anyway. 44% for the higher amounts of DNA that we put in, and 32% still for the lower amounts for the 0.26 nanograms per microliter, 0.5 nanograms per microliter at the you know at 15 nanograms. You see the um, uh, the, the traces uh, of the fragment analyzer uh, before you know the shear DNA and the post uh, ligation and cleanup uh, DNA sizes, just as uh, as a notion that it is uh, you know very nicely done in an automated fashion there in this uh, single vessel. Here is basically the interpretation of the whole thing. And basically what you see is the uh, percent conversion, uh, conversion rate versus the input amount in the left graph. So 250, 110, that's the numbers that I showed in the table before. So 40%, maybe over 40% plus minus for the 250 and 40% for the uh, 100 plus minus. And then for the 10, it goes down to 32. But when you look at the right graph, the conversion rate ranges, this is taken directly from the Kappa uh, web page. Uh, where they show the you know the the, the ranges of the conversion rate uh, for the covaris and hyperprep. Look look at the look at the blue the blue bars basically. So for 250 you have anywhere from 30 to 60, for 100 you go a little bit lower, and for uh, 10 nanograms you're you know lower lower than way below the 30 percent. And you see in the yellow um, uh, the yellow double arrows you see our range that we got. And for 250 we are right in the middle of the what what is expected. For the 100 nanograms, we are at the upper end, which is encouraging. But the most uh, important thing is that when we go to the 10 nanogram input, we are above what you what Kappa would expect for this kind of a library prep, and that is important. 
We think that is an important aspect. You can probably uh, increase that if you uh, fiddle around and optimize the, uh, you know, the, the, the whole thing um, uh, for even smaller volumes. Uh, we didn't do that yet. So this was all done on, by the way, it was all done on an uh, LE220 plus RSC, which is, a, uh, uh, you know, an automatable, fully automatable line transducer instrument. And the, the liquid handling was done on a Lynx uh, platform, but we know that a collaborator of us or a customer of us did this all, all on a Hamilton as well. And I'm, I'm sure that you also know that you can do it on a TCAN, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, um, to make the long story short, we have basically a buffer and volume standardization of DNA samples. Uh, it's a novel solution for uh, so somebody in a clinical lab core that uh, says, I don't want to lyophilize, I don't want to use a sample that is substandard uh, for, for, for my and go forward and, and then fail in my library prep. Uh, so we can do buffer normalization. Um, we can do uh, um, uh, it buffer, uh, 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 you know, like uh, um, uh, removal of uh, contaminants, and we can basically also concentrate at the same time. You can do the library prep in the same vessel because it is a you know a standard PCR plate format, and you can also and I just added at the end uh, have this in the manual workflow for an eight AFA tube strip is is an eight eight strip tube uh, format like a PCR eight strip, and uh, for that you would uh, use other uh, focused ultrasonic cadres, the so called ME two twenty and ML two thirty. That may be something you're in, interested if you haven't have interest in that, uh, and you also want to know anything else, just shoot me an email, or uh, you know like uh, contact me through the uh, through the web page. Um, and I will uh, be glad to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention.